beginning of the last year, 2019, I've created the SpaceX GraphQL API, and uh, you can find me on at is w carlos Arie, like everywhere in twitter a uh, linkedin github uh, medium divco like everywhere um the agenda for today is going to be like it's going to be everything is going to be like full life coding uh so we have seen already the benefits of graphql i'm going to be talking also a bit about it and a uh, then we are going to have a quickly introduction about like why graphql makes a lot of things with typescript and then we are going to just like, switch to the IDE and have a GraphQL, a production ready GraphQL server with Apollo and JavaScript. We are going to evolve it to TypeScript and see the benefits and how we can do that. And then we are going to do the same with the client. So we are going to have a React app uh, in JavaScript. And then we are going to see how we can fetch data and represent data. And we are going to evolve it to TypeScript and see the benefits. So. To start with, I like to do some jokes. <laughs> so if you like like dev jokes, like you've got a github.com slash Ruti Kapoor dev joke. I'm gonna put the slide in the meetup uh, group. So uh, after that, you can feel free to, to check it out. But uh, yeah, uh, Shruti is a software engineer in PayPal uh, based in SF. I think she's originally from India. And uh, she, she created these like, I don't know, thousands of dev jobs. So they're pretty cool. Uh, so uh, the first one is like, how do you come for a JavaScript bug? Anyone knows it? Problem Any guess? Problem. What? Problem. You can say it. <laughs> 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 what, uh, what is the programmer's favorite Hana play? Is the meeting room? Probably not. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think, guys? Where, 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 where? No, I, this is difficult, but it's like full bar. <laughs> and the last one, we can just go through to the top. So what is the developer say to the repository? And I'm pretty sure that you have said this to a lot of you, like, friends. Are you committed? Uh, it's a good one. Just, just to submit it. Just to submit it. But now, in this case, it's fuck you. <laughs> OK, cool. Um, so again, like, first, like, like briefly, um, uh, 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 like summary of the benefits of GraphQL, we have overfetching. Is fetch uh, overfetching? The problem is like you are usually you fetch more data that the, you you really need it. So in GraphQL, you can just specify which field you want it. So you have let's say a mobile client, a tablet client, a desktop client, and a, even like a wearable client. In the wearable, probably you want to fetch two fields in the client in the mobile like five in the tablet like 10 and in the desktop like all of them so we rest you are fetching all the payload that you know as we are front end and back in developer we know this this problem so that's one benefit of graphql then we have overfetching uh, underfetching which is that you are going to be able to uh, fetch nested resources and then you are going to process all the data in the server side and then you are going to just in one round trip HTTP call you are going to get the data back so let's say that we have a, in, in the SpaceX, we are going to have uh, uh, histories, and the history they are going to have launches, and those launches they are going to have rockets, and those rockets they are going to have ships. So probably in REST, you are going to do, you are going to hit the history uh, endpoint, and you are going to get 10 results. And then for every single then, you are going to do another HTTP run through call to get the, uh, uh, the launch. And then for every single launch, you are going to get an HTTP call to do a, a, a rocket and then the ship. So that's a lot of HTTP calls. And the problem is, is we have mobile phones. Uh, probably you are driving or you are in an uh, area where the connection is not that good. So you know, just one, it's just one round trip to go like is lost. You got to wait or you got to wait for that. And that. That takes a lot of effort, right? <laughs> so basically what you're going to do in GraphQL is like you are going to send a smart query to your data, to your data sources. And you are going to process all that data in here in your device, so everything is super fast. And whenever that the information is ready, you are going to send it back in, in, in one single HTTP uh, um, a request. Uh, then we've got a strong git type system. For me, it's like the most feature, uh, 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 the best feature of GraphQL. Uh, we are passing, OK, how many of you are, have you were just at least one day in the backend side? Almost all of you guys, probably, right? Uh, do you use types in your backend sites? Of course, we use types. 
are now in the front side. Do we all stop in the front side? Of course not. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and I think it's super important, like we are putting a lot of logic, uh, business logic, like client logic, even like interconnection to other devices in our front end, and we are not typing. And it, I think that's, that's a really good problem. And uh, so the, the, the good thing from GraphQL is like, if you wanna communicate from your server side to your client side, you are gonna have this type an introspectable contract because you can have a type, but if you are not going to be able to introspect it, you cannot do anything with those types. So uh, nice that you are going to be able to have a stronger type schema in your GraphQL APIs, and also you are going to be able to introspect it. And we're going to see like the infinite possibilities that we've got with that stuff. And then there are like a lot of benefits, but we don't have time today to see it. So GraphQL and TypeScript, if you probably know TypeScript, uh, it's a type server with JavaScript, but you can use like a, a reason, or you can use flow, or you can use like, if you are using an other uh, languages, it's basically type in the front end. And also in the back end, of course. A, then TypeScript and GraphQL, both of them are in TypeScript. Uh, they're already used in large uh, 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 companies. Uh, 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 so, you know, even like if you reach out the community, you go to the GitHub and TypeScript, like a lot of people from Microsoft working on it, incredible engineers, so uh, you are safe with TypeScript. And uh, I like to call it like the state of art of JavaScript because there are new evolution every, every single week, every single month. It's a lot of stuff, but, but that's, that's good for us. So basically, like, we want to introspect our API with GraphQL, but also we want to introspect our codebase with, let's say, TypeScript flow, any single uh, uh, static uh, uh, type language. So we do know that GraphQL have a type system. And that type system is introspectable, so we are going to be able to see all the fields that our API are composed of. And so we are going to have our application as a single sort of truth, where we are going to have our GraphQL schema. And from there, we probably want to extend all our type definition to both to our client and our front end. And also, even if you want it, you can start from your database when you are going to declare all your rows and tables. And from there, because probably that's the data that you are going to expose, you can do some business logic. You can change, of course. But like now in the 90% of the application, you, you really want to replicate or you want to extend the touch from either your database or your server to your client. And we are going to do that with this incredible uh, open source tooling called GraphQL Code Jam. So basically, we are going to auto-generate types based on our GraphQL implementation. And uh, if you think about it, like we can auto-generate type, but you can auto-generate a lot of stuff. So now there are companies that they are auto-generating uh, uh, graph, uh, graph databases based on your GraphQL schema. And there are like companies that they are auto-generating uh, React components type from your GraphQL schema. And there are companies that they are auto-generating uh, uh, a, a GraphQL API with uh, serverless functions, with a, uh, 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 with a lot of stuff uh, from either your database or your GraphQL schema. And this, this, this idea is super interesting. And I think this year, in, to, in 2020, uh, we are going to see uh, how they know code or how companies they are going to help uh, uh, beginners, uh, engineers, in order to adapt these new technologies. So OK, uh, let's jump in the live coding. So explore the code a bit first, then GraphQL server, then GraphQL client. And we are going to be using the SpaceX uh, GraphQL API. We've got even two of them. So we are going to be based in this api.spacex.lang slash GraphQL. But what I can see you guys, what I can tell you guys is like this api.spacex.lang slash res is a fully type auto-generate REST API based in a GraphQL schema. So I've used another open source library in order to, with I think 30, 40 lines, you can auto-generate a fully type REST API from your GraphQL schema. And a, all the Code is open source, so you can check it out in github.com slash uh, SpaceX land. And, uh, and we are going to see it right now. So cool. So now I'm going gonna, gonna to just go to my ID. And I, I'm going to go fast. If we probably you are going to have some questions, then we can just uh, 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 talk about it. Um, so in my server, OK, let's start from the server side. So we're going to have our servers. And then uh, we're going to check all the code base. So we are going to have our index. And then some utils. In the util, we are going to have you know, like some util function like to find, limit, to offset, or whatever. And uh, yeah, so util is good. And then we don't have just types yet. We have just a context, but just like 10 lines, that's nothing. We are going to see later how we are going to auto-generate it. And then we are going to have a two servers, which is going to be the GraphQL server and the REST server. So this is what I was talking with you guys before. So in 35 lines, I'm auto-generating a REST API 
fully documented, uh, fully typed with a uh, GraphQL schema. So I'm using the SOFA API open source library, which uh, 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 is using OpenAPI that probably you, you, you guys are using, and Swagger to auto-generate the docs. So basically, you're going to use OpenAPI from this library. I'm going to pass the GraphQL schema that, that contains all my fields, all my uh, uh, query, point, uh, query mutation and subscription. And uh, I'm going to just expose it in my Express uh, app instance, and then I'm going to expose the, uh, the docs with Swagger. Like, incredible. In 30 lines, you can actually like a REST API, fully tap and fully documented. And then we are going to have our server. So uh, I'm doing a lot of, uh, like, uh, this is the index, so sorry. I, we are, this is the GraphQL server. Uh, so uh, I'm doing like some some of this stuff, but don't don't worry about this. And basically, I, we are using Apollo Server, <coughs> and we have to pass the schema and the content. Even like you can like forget the content. So basically, uh, what we are going to see today is the schema. How we can declare the schema? How important is the schema? Cool. So then, if we go back to our like core source, uh, we are going to have uh, the index. So we check the index. Uh, we let's say that we forget the rest, and we're going to have just the GraphQL, and we have we are going to pass a node ins instance, and then the config there is going to be a schema, and the content with a database. So uh, to put in in in, in to, to 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 let you know how this works, so we are going to have Mongo database. It's a pu public SpaceX uh, Mongo database. We contain a lot of data about the SpaceX, and then I've just created the server side a GraphQL API. That is gonna just get data from the Mongo database and just like just display it, and then we are gonna see the client. So Mongo database, uh, TypeScript and GraphQL server, and TypeScript and React client. Now we are in the server. Cool. So I think like here we good, and now we are gonna see the GraphQL schema, our single soul of truth. So we are gonna see in the schema if let's say if in my Mongo database I do have like tables called Capsule, company, dragon, uh, lamp up, launches, uh, mission, blah, blah. That's what I created. So I went to the Mongo database. I've seen all the collection, all the tables, and I created uh, the same domain for my GraphQL uh, types. So let's say that we are going to see the rockets. So in this way of creating GraphQL APIs, there are too many. In JavaScript, there, there are like more than 10, I guess. And it, then you've got .NET, you've got C, you've got C++. Uh, uh, Python and Scala and a lot of stuff. Uh, so we are gonna be using SDL, schema, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the SDL and the schema first. And uh, what we're gonna have, and I think like even if you are beginning in JavaScript world, you are gonna be able to understand it. So we can see here that we are gonna declare our query entry points, as we have seen uh, and, and Mark has mentioned before. Query is to uh, fetch data. Mutation is to mutate data, and a subscription is to subscribe to data. So now we are just going to fetch information. So let's say that we are in the REST world, so probably that's what we are going to have, right? We are going to have a slash rocket, and we are going to return some rockets. And then probably we, ha we can have a, uh, um, um, uh, kind of also, uh, if we want to get just one rocket, we are going to have slash rocket slash ID, right? Uh, the good thing of GraphQL is like we, by definition and by the specification, we have to define every single field, every single type of the field that we are declaring in our GraphQL schema. So let's say that we have a rocket. So we have to define, let's say, we have some arguments in order to do limits and offset in order to do pagination. We have to tell them that it's going to be an integer. But also, we have to declare what is going to be the return a data from that endpoint. So one common problem is you have your REST API, and your REST API in your Swagger doc is telling you that it's going to return an array of objects. And that object is going to contain a field called uh, ID in lowercase. And when you fetch the data from your API, it's not ID lowercase, it's ID uppercase because you change it, but someone forgot to update the, the, the docs. And the cool thing is like all the documentation that are going to be generated, out generated from this GraphQL schema. So never your documentation and your API, it is going to be not on sync. It, this is so imp super important because I'm pretty sure that you guys, you have like lose a lot of time in order, you know, to wait for the backend engineering team to answer your emails and blah, blah, blah. blah. And uh, so, yeah, we can see here rockets and uh, let's say that we don't have params, so we are going to return an array of rockets. And then if we want to get a rocket, we are going to have ID and we uh, we are going to have the ID type and we are going to mark it as required because it makes sense that you have to uh, specify an ID in order to get a rocket. And then we are going to have all the types. So let's say that we are going to return a type of rocket and we're going to have like 
uh, even we can have a these are like GraphQL primitive types but also we could have like GraphQL um, uh, uh, complex status for example at rocket first stage but rocket first stage is basically like uh, an object or a type which is basically a subtype with other GraphQL primitive types or a complex type and then force is going to be another type cool so I think like we understand this so we have to specify any type that we are declaring for our API and thus this is this is smart type and introspectable contract. And then we have to check how we are going to return data because here we are specifying that this is a rocket, but where the data is coming from. Awesome. So is we are going to see that we are going to have the resolver. So we are going to resolve those fields. So if we check here, basically we are, if we have the we have declaring uh, one query type and two uh, query entry point fields, that's what we are going to have in our resolver. So we are going to have rockets and rocket let me just make this bigger and if we see rockets what we are doing is like we are going to our database and even if you guys i can show you how the database is 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 is, is composed of so basically we are going to have here a mongo Publix api set uh, uh, spaces database and we are just using mongo client from mongodb in order to connect to it and just we are just returning in the context and we are accessing to it here in the context DB. So I'm going to go to my rocket collection in my Mongo database. I'm going to do some finding, sorting, skipping, limiting, and I'm going to return to array. And this data is the data that is coming from my database, and that's what, that's what I'm going to expose. So if I go to my type dev in my rocket, so this is what I'm going to get. And I'm going to have the types. And the cool thing is, like, let's say that here I'm returning a one. Uh, when I'm requesting the data, I'm going to get a GraphQL error. And GraphQL is going to tell me, hey, you have to specify that there is going to be an array of an object that is going to contain blah, 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 but you're returning an integer. So, hey, check, check what, what, is going, what, is, what is going wrong here. And the rocket the same. So we are going to have in the second param, we're going to have the ID that we have specified in our top de type devs, and we are going to do the same. Database, go to database, go to our rocket collection, find the valid D, and we are going to just return to the first element, and we are going to return uh, one object. Cool. I'm going to go like faster, I guess, because, yeah, I'm getting, wow. And the limit yeah. you have defined here as one. Sorry? The limit. <coughs> this? Limit parameter. Uh, so this is a function that I'm exposing in the context. So it's a JavaScript function. If you can see here in the context, 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 uh, here. Uh, so in the context, I'm passing all the function in the content, and the content is going to have the limit, and the limit is going to be the limit is going to be a function that I have uh, uh, passed, uh, and that's it. Uh, cool. Uh, I'm going to try to go super fast because I'm running out of time. Awesome. Uh, okay. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to just like, um, let me check. Okay. Let's go to the server and just, I'm going to just run it. And a, okay, I think I'm going to auto-generate all the types. Uh, okay, cool. So we are going to get, this is the API. So you can see localhost and I'm not cheating you guys. We are localhost. And then we are, that's the cool thing that we were like, Mark was mentioning before, let's say that I'm joining tomorrow a new company. I don't know anything about that company. So I'm going to open brackets. I'm going to do control space and I'm going to have all the information. So someone has told me, has opened a Jira ticket that I have to uh, fetch the rocket uh, from the API. So I'm going to just the oh, rockets. So rockets. And so there is a rocket. And then I'm going to do the ID and then I'm going to get the name and I'm going to get the description. And then I'm going to get the cost per launch. And I can just click play, and we are going to have here all the info related to the rocket. So we're going to have four rockets. And let's say that we want to check, I don't know if you guys do like, like space it, but I love it. And uh, we have this Falcon Heavy that it costs like a 90 million US dollar, which is a lot. But even like, you know, this is like super annoying cost per launch in that case. I want to do uh, uh, these uh, uh, parts, and probably we are doing in the client, and that's, you know, you can have like some errors. So you can also specify aliases in your API uh, request, so you don't have to do that logic anymore on the client. This is super uh, uh, useful. And, a, uh, and yeah, so this is cool. I'm going to go fast. So now what we are going to do is like, we are going to evolve our API. So let me just uh, get a rocket bar ID, and then I'm going to get this ID. And then we are going to see that we are getting just one object. OK, we can see here the, all the info. Cool. So now I'm going to evolve my API. So I'm going to go to Visual Code Studio, and I'm going to use this incredible Visual Code extension to 
check my pull request and also like pull the data. So I, we are going to see that there is a pull request open. Uh, someone, I, mean, I was, I, I was, I did this. So I'll drop my name query field. So we are going to evolve our API. So we can, we are, we're going to check out the branch. We are going to see the div, and in the div, we can see that we have add a new query entry point called rocket by name, so we are going to be able to search by name. But also, we have changed the ID from a lowercase to uppercase. And you know, this can happen. We can change our standards and blah, blah. So now we are going to see what happens. So we are going to go back here. I'm going to restart my API. And uh, we are not going to get any error. And uh, we are going to see uh, the problems that this can lead to. So we can go back to our rocket, to our type definition, and we can see the new evolution of our API. So the new query entry point field, and then the change here. So basically, what is going to happen right now is a, let me just restart this again. Uh, as we have changed this information, we are required to change this info because now we are not getting ID lowercase anymore. We are getting like ID uppercase. But the problem is like a, let me check. Something is going wrong here. Swagger docs out. Okay, this is live coding. And type devs change. Okay, let me save all and let's try to do again. Cool. A, so the, 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 the point here, OK, I'm not sure if we're going to make it. But uh, the, the point is, like, we have changed this. And now when we are exposing our API to the world, uh, if we can see here, I don't know what I'm getting uh, an error. Let me just quick check. Uh, uh, but a, 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 what is the error? Here, uh, Falcon. Oh, I, I think I, I typed something here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's good. Awesome. Cool. So now we should be good. Cool. So now um, when I'm running this, uh, what is going to happen, we have changed the ID to for lowercase to uppercase. So we are required to check, uh, to change our resolvers. So here we are not going to get ID lowercase anymore. We are going to get ID uh, uppercase. And, uh, but we can see that the server is, is running. And uh, this is a huge problem. So now if we go back to the same query, we can see here the GraphQL based specification because we have changed the type definition. It's going to tell us, OK, there is not an argument called ID lowercase. So what is it? So I'm going to do control space. And I'm going to get auto-completion about all my fields. So uh, this is good. And the problem for me is this looks correct. My code base looks good. No errors in the compilation, in compilation time. And we have our API ready for thousands of millions of people to have access with it. So now I'm going to click play. And what is going to happen with the same input data, I'm getting a no. And this is a problem. This is a huge problem because it, we are exposing an inconsistent state of our API to the rest of the world. And uh, you don't know what is going on here. You're getting a no. You, you can have weeks or days or hours uh, a, uh, uh, trying to figure out what is going on here. And like a lot of requests, they are going to fail in thousands of clients and and we have we we want to avoid this. So basically what we are gonna do right now is we are gonna auto generate all the type of script type based on our graphical definition and have a runtime check error to avoid this inconsistency for our APIs. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to I'm gonna do just yarn GQL gen. So I'm gonna be using a GraphQL code generator in order to um, uh, 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 um, um, uh, auto generate all the type of type in my graphical schema. And if we can see here the div, uh, we, uh, here it is, we are going to have a file with more than 5,000 lines of types. So if you want to put types in your code base, the first type that you want to put is some, is, 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 are those that you don't have to write, that you want to auto generate for your single cell trail. Uh, so basically, what we are going to do, I'm going to go super fast here. I'm going to just uh, to, uh, type my, my resolvers. And uh, what, what we can see here right now is like if I try to, I'm going to save this. If I try to run my server again, I'm going to get a compile time error in order to avoid inconsistent state of my applications. Uh, so we can see here that it fails. And it's going to tell me that ID doesn't exist on the type rocket arcs. And what I can do is like do control space. And uh, because I have already declared what is going to be the type and the name of that field, uh, we're going to have there is an ID, uppercase, that is going to be in a string. And now I just uh, can't put it. 
but let's go even like further. So let's say that we want to evolve our API. So we have created a new type definition, which is going to be called rocket by name. And I want to implement the business logic for that a, 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 a endpoint. So I'm going to just, let's say that I join a company. I don't know anything. I have a Jira ticket open that I have to implement. I got, I got a, a return the rocket by a name, uh, a rocket from the SpaceX database. So I'm going to do control space. I'm going to say, oh, rocket by name. So let's, oh, there's a rocket by name. Uh, this is going to be an async function that is going to have some param parameters. And it's going to do, I'm going to do what I do usually in my work, just copy and paste everywhere. Uh, so a, um, this is going to be this. And uh, then we can also, we're not going to use the object. Also, as I have declared all my type definition in my arguments, I can do control space in my arguments. And I'm going to have this, I'm getting a name as an input that is going to be an string. And also, we can destruct to the context. And in the context, probably I'm going to just need the database. So here we can see that I'm going to use the database. And I'm going to just use the name. So when I'm saving this, if now I go back to my API, when I'm running, if I'm not getting any compile time errors, in, sorry, any runtime error, uh, that means that my API is going to be consistent. It is going to have the data that I, I'm looking for. So now if I'm going back, we're having no, I'm going to click again. We are going to get the data, and I'm going to drop it by name. And we are going to do by name, and it's going to be Falcon 1. And we are going to get the data, and we can just fetch all their all their, the, all their stuff here. And I'm I going to just stop here. We are not going to see the client today. Tomorrow I'm going to be speaking on another meetup. So probably uh, if you want it, you can go there because I'm going to uh, do it. But I think like we can just go quickly over it. Uh, so this is the server side. And uh, I think that you might have some questions that we can discuss later. Uh, but we have a remote, remote talk in one minute. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, let me just connect with you first. Uh, uh, me the, and just tell him that wait a bit. Uh, and then, so, okay, this is the server side. And now we are going to have the client side. So in the client side, you know, I'm going to show you guys just how to fetch data from, 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 from GraphQL. So we are going to have, let's say, this is the DSX, so the data that we are going to represent. And this launches part is going to come from somewhere. So the launches part are going to come from the query. And we are going to have here the query. So the same that we are... Um, blah, blah, blah. So I have to put this always on a manage. No, continue. OK. OK, we can just wait here or here. I think it's here. Hey, Tiro, can you hear me? Hello. Cool. Hey, Carlos. Yes, I can. Yeah, uh, no, give, give, me, give me two minutes, please, that I'm finishing my talk. <laughs> Just give me a sec. I, I will ping you up yeah, sure, soon. Sure, sure. Thanks. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to go back here. Sorry for that. Cool. Uh, so, OK, so in React, so what we're going to have is like uh, uh, the same query that we are doing here. So you can just like fetch whatever data you want it. And uh, you are going to cop copy the query. And then you are going to pass it here. And you are going to, um, let's, let's open it first. So to the uh, client and then jump start. And, a, and a, you are going to get the data from the query. And also, it's pretty nice because you are uh, because of Apollo and React, they have created a, a type, a, um, a, 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 a method where you are going to have all the states uh, of your uh, request. So let's say that you want to show an error when you are having an error, you are going to show like an spinner when you are loading, you are going to get those data. Uh, but now, let's say that we are just getting the launches, and I'm just iterating about it. And if uh, we see the, the, the front end, uh, so uh, we can see here that we've got a mission name, a rocket name, and details, and uh, one image. Uh, so this is what we've got. And uh, 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 we can see here, I don't know if you guys like, uh, like, uh, like, like SpaceX, but for me, it's, like, it's super awesome what these guys are doing. Um, OK, cool. Uh, the same. We can do this, but we might have some problem. Let's say that we want to evolve our client. Uh, so let's say that we have this. And uh, I save this, and everything looks good. And I can put this, this code to production. But what is going to happen here? This is going to be undefined. Undefined, at, at facing something to undefined is going to be an error. And then I go to my client, and boom. And we're having a lot of this every day. And 
that's annoying and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do this like super quickly. Uh, so basically, in order to have or to achieve an incredible developer experience for someone that even don't know what, it, what, what they are doing, let's say that it's new in the company, um, I would like to be able to introspect my query and my API for my IDE, but also auto-generate all the types based in my uh, GraphQL queries. So um, what I'm going to do here is like, I'm going to go to the client here as, as well. I'm going to just uh, uh, call John GQL gem. And I'm going to activate a visual core extension called Apollo GraphQL uh, that is going uh, uh, to allow me to introspect my API from my IDE, which is awesome. And now we are going to see how this works. So I'm going to go to my Apollo config. I got to pass the uh, GraphQL uh, uh, API. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to load my GraphQL schema with all my types and all my fields. And let's say that now I want to uh, like display something new in my client side. So I don't want to do. I don't want to go to the documentation. I don't want to do any console log to ensure that the data that I'm getting for the API is the data that my documentation says. Basically, what I do is I want to code. I want to like build shit fast, as, as as fast as possible. So I'm gonna do control space. I'm gonna have all my fields available in my ID, so I don't have to go even to the incredible documentation of GraphQL. I just have to be in my ID. And let's say that I want to get the shapes. As the shapes, even like we can see there, it is, it is going to contain an array of shapes. GraphQL is smart enough in order to know, oh, you have to uh, uh, specify the fields that you want to uh, uh, add. Uh, let me just stage these changes. And uh, so now I'm going to get an IE, I'm going to get the CPID, the name, and the uh, port. And uh, no position is going to be a home port, I guess. And then I'm going to even create an LES so I don't have to change from a snap cache to a camera cache and a, an image. So now when, I, when I'm saving this, what is going to happen is I'm going to auto generate the types from this new evolution. And a, if we, everything, yeah, so here we've got the types. So we can see here like, uh, like 600 lines, but I state those changes. And then we can see the new evolution of my API. So that means that even I, I didn't have to go to the documentation to evolve my API. But also, I don't have to. So let's say that we're going to get launches dot uh, query. It's query, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. So now what is going to happen is like my data, my return data is going to be a type, which means that even I don't know anything about this, I know if I do control space here, I'm going to have my SIPs. And even if I want to iterate those SIPs, let's say SIPs, and then I don't know what it says, but I know that I'm using TypeScript, so TypeScript is going to help me out. So I'm going to do a dot, and I'm going to have all the methods that are available in, that, in an array. So I'm going to do just a, a filter with Boolean to, do, to remove uh, 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 null values, and then I'm going to just do map. And a, we are going to do the same here. So let's say that we have to, uh, we are going to return something like this, and I'm going to just finish this tool and go uh, to. So I can also. Uh, uh, introspect all my types, my complex type for that object, and we are just like getting one array. We will have like like infinite fields, and we can see how let's say that we are gonna just uh, like put the image because we don't have time. So I'm gonna do image, and this uh, data is gonna be I put it twice, but that's fine. Uh, image, and a I know what is going on here, and it's gonna be an image. That we are gonna do with a uh, hundred. So when I'm saving this, if I don't have any error, what is going to happen if I go back to my, 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 my client, we can see here all the information already available. And uh, if we go back and we do the same with the rugged, so we have rugged, now what is going to happen is that we are going to have a runtime error in saying you, hey, rugged doesn't exist, so uh, what is going on? Uh, there is a, probably a rugged. And then we can just go back to the client, and that's going to work, and that's going to be fine. Uh, so that's everything for me. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, the slides are, are there, so like feel free to get the QR code, but I'm going to put it in the Meetup uh, uh, account. Uh, uh, so now...